Hello, first of all, a happy new year. I hope this is a new year in which all your resolutions on learning Python for geotechnical engineering can come true. And in that respect, today's video might be pretty essential because as geotechnical engineers, we work a lot with CPT data. And this tutorial will show you how to work with different CPT formats and bring them into a standard format for processing using the Groundhog PCPT processing object. In this video, we will cover how to import CPT data and how to plot raw data and customize those plots. We know that CPT data exists in various formats. There is Excel format or CSV format. Other societies or governing bodies have tried to define standards for CPT data such as the AGS standard or the GEF standard. All these, datas, uh, all these data sources come with different definitions and different structures. And Groundhog has a number of methods to import data from those different sources into a standardized format. On top of ASCII data, web services also exist and they have to be applauded because they provide a brilliant way to import CPT data straight from the web such as the uh, PYDOV package from Databank Onderhoek Veranderen. The question is, how do we get all of these different data sources into a standard data format for further processing? That's where Groundhog aims to provide an answer. In Groundhog, you have a class called PCPT Processing, which contains the necessary methods to import the data, to plot data, process data, such as normalizations, and apply correlations. All of that functionality is included within the PCPT processing class. There are a couple of conventions for this class. The data attribute of this class requires the depth column to have the title Z, open square brackets, meters, closed square brackets. The columns for cone tip resistance, sleeve friction and pore pressure at the shoulder, QC, FS and U2, need to have the names defined in the slide and also need to have units of MPA. We'll cover how to get non-MPA units into MPA units later on. There's also a provision for working with discontinuous CPT data by adding a push number to um, a given CPT push. On top of the standardized data, we can add as many additional columns with other data, such as pore pressure ratio, friction ratio, etc., as we like. In the example shown on the right, you can see that friction ratio is also imported alongside the other columns. Importing the PCPT processing object in a Jupyter notebook happens with the line of code shown at the bottom of the slide. When we import CPT data, we first of all need to create one of these PCPT processing objects and then use a load method. There are several load methods of which the simplest one to explain is the load Excel method. That method simply takes an Excel file as the argument and then will uh, convert the Excel data into data for the PCPT processing object. If we look at the Excel file which is provided on the right, we can see that the depth column does not have the required Z meters name. The fee friction and the pore pressure are provided in KPA instead of MPA and there is no push number. We can get the data into the requested format by saying that our Z key, the depth key, is not equal to Z meters, which would be the standard. If that is the case, we can simply omit that argument, but saying that here our Z key is depth meters. That will tell the PCPT processing object to import the column depth as the depth column. We can also say that our sleeve friction column is FSKPA because it's given in KPA instead of MPA and that our U2 column is UKPA instead of U2 MPA. To convert our data from KPA to MPA, 
we can apply a multiplier. So we're going to apply a multiplier of 1000, so 0 0.001, on the FS and U2 columns. And if we do all that, we can see what the data attribute of our PC PT processing class looks like on the bottom right. You can see that this data has been nicely converted into the requested format. And you can see that there's also a push number that has been added and it's going to be one because there's just one single push for this PCPT processing object. You can see that there was a friction ratio column in the Excel file as well, and that has just been imported as is. There's different other adapters to be used in Groundhog, and you can check out the documentation to see how these adapters work but they work uh, according to the same principles as the load Excel method. There is an adapter for loading AGS data, GEF data, and then other file formats which are commonly used offshore. If you have an ASCII file format for which there is no adapter, you can contact the package authors by simply opening an issue on the GitHub repository for Groundhog. And if you want to get started without waiting for the issue to be resolved, you can simply load the data into a pandas data frame if you can write functionality to do that and then simply use the load pandas function to load that pandas data frame into a PCPT processing object. There is a notebook available online as well in the binder for which the link is shown at the end. Uh, PCPT data reading with Groundhog and that tutorial notebook explains all the principles in more detail. Groundhog also contains functionality for combining CPTs. For instance, if a CPT had to be restarted or some drilling out had to, be take, had to take place and there are CPTs from different files that have to be combined, we can simply create a PCPT processing object for each CPT and then use the combine PCPT method on one CPT and add the second CPT to it. We need to specify which data needs to be kept, and here the data from the first CPT, PCPT1, will be kept. This is well suited for cases, for instance, where we have a CPT uh, from the seabed combined with a downhole CPT. If you want to create a joint CPT of the two, you can use the combined, combined CPT functionality. Plotting a raw data is very simple with Groundhog. It's almost trivial. We simply need to call the plot raw CPT method. And if we call that method on the PCPT processing object without any further arguments, it will already display the CPT data. There is three plotting panels, one displaying cone resistance versus depth, sleeve friction versus depth, and pore pressure at the shoulder versus depth. We can further customize axis ranges and the tick marks on the axis by specifying the range and tick arguments. Here you can see that the range for the U2, the pore pressure at the shoulder, has been modified to be from minus 0.5 to 2 MPA with tick marks every 0.5 megapascal. A hydrostatic line is also shown on the plot, which is instructive to know whether our pore pressures are close to hydrostatic or whether there is significant over or under pressures. That's it for this tutorial on CPT data import. There will be a further tutorial on PCPT processing once the data is imported. In the meantime, you can always contact us by sending an email, looking at the GitHub repository or reviewing the docs. The notebooks are in the binder links shown here. And since version 0.4 of Groundhog, you can also support the package development by buying me coffee. Any donations are used for buying coffee, but also keeping the Groundhog development running, hosting the documentation, and making sure that our coding habits are well fueled with coffee. As you perhaps have seen, there is now also some Groundhog apparel available through Redbubble. So if you want to show off your own Groundhog t-shirt, hoodie, or mug, don't hesitate and visit the online shop there will be a percentage of the proceeds dedicated to the package development as well. Thanks for watching.